I'll start with an example. So, Ministry of Health in a country wants to estimate the proportion of children in the elementary schools who have been immunized against measles. And they want to do this in a time period of one month. So, there will be around millions of children studying in the elementary schools in a country. So, is it possible to go and evaluate or ask the history of immunization history in each of these children? You may sometimes tell that I, uh, is, uh, I, will, um, I have enough fund for that. Even then it's not possible. If you have a funding, then how can you do that within a period of one month? So you may tell that I uh, recruit so many investigators or so many uh, field officers uh, so that they can cover the entire population. Even then it is not possible. So if the, if the uh, data collectors are more number of uh, data collectors, then the, there is chance of an interpersonal uh, variations in that. So the results will not be accurate. So if you want to do a study in a large population with, uh, within a time frame, uh, in a short period of time or in a time frame, you have to go for a sampling. So in this class, I will tell you about the various sampling methods. The probability sampling, non-probability sampling and the advantage and disadvantage of each of them. What is this sampling? Sampling we can define or tell it as a procedure by which some of some members of the population are selected as representatives of the entire population. Uh, in this case, the children studying in the elementary schools of the country are the population. So there will be two terminologies you have to remember. One is a population or the universe. So the population or the universe is the all the people or the, all the items uh, for which we want to study the particular characteristics. In this example, it is the children, the whole, every uh, whole children studying in the elementary schools of this country X that constitute the population of the universe. So uh, from that we will derive a sampling frame. What is the sampling frame? So if it is in India, the whole um, children studying in elementary schools of India constitute the population and from that we have to take the sampling frame. For, we take four states, one from northeast, one from west, one from um, north and one from south. So in these states, uh, I have taken four states and the list of all children in the elementary schools of these four states constitute the sampling frame. From that, I have to take samples according to the whatever strategy I am taking, whether it is a non-probability sampling method or a probability sampling method. So, from the sampling frame, I have to take the sample or this is otherwise called the basic sampling unit or the PSU. Okay, so and I will conduct the study on the sample and the results of the study will be generalized to the entire population. So that is how we do a sampling. Okay, and this sample should be a true representative of this universe or the population in terms of place, in terms of uh, age, in place of gender and in place of time also. Okay, so this sample should be a true representative of this population in every characters. So we can go for a generalizability and that is called the external validity of the study. Okay. So, sample should be a true representative of the entire population in terms of place, time and person. 
and the study population depends upon the research question. In this, it was uh, what is the uh, prevalence of uh, children studying in elementary school who have been immunized against measles. So here the study population is children studying in the elementary school. Isn't it? And if the research question is how many injections do people receive in each year in India, then what is the population there? The study population is the population of India. And if the research question is how many hospitals in India have a needle stick prevention policy, then the population there is hospitals in India. So as I already told, we have to remember that this population will vary depending upon the research question. So from that, we have to go for taking a sample, right? The main objective of the sampling is, one is to, we can reduce the cost of study and second one, time can be saved, time constraints. And third, there is, if so many people are, are deputed for data collection, there can be chance of an index observer variability uh, bias uh, and also sampling error can occur. So by doing a correct sampling of the um, population, all these um, drawbacks can be corrected. So in this, uh, a town with 3000 homes will constitute the universe or the sampling population or the study population. And from this, we are getting a sketch map of all the streets with an updated total number of homes. So, this will be the sampling frame. Okay. And from that, we have to take each home. That is the sample. And how many samples, uh, how many homes has to be sampled and how, how we have to set the uh, home uh, from this sampling frame that I will tell you. So from the uh, sampling frame we have to take the basic sampling unit. So that is by, mainly by two methods are there. One is a non-probability sampling and another one is a probability sampling. And as the name suggests, a non-probability sampling means the probability of each sample getting selected into the uh, study is not known. The probability of the sample is not known. But in a probability sampling, we know that the probability of each person or an each item getting selected into the study is known. In a case of probability and in a non-probability sampling, the probability of each item or a unit getting selected into the study is not known. Okay. So, which one will be better? Definitely, a probability sampling will be the better one. So that the errors and bias all can be uh, reduced or eliminated to a greater extent in a probability sampling. This non-probability sampling is mainly four and some textbooks will tell as a fifth one that is a self-selection sampling also. Mainly, uh, it is of four types. And I, I already told you, this non-probability sampling, the chance of bias is very high and it is not usually used for um, proving, and it is not usually use, uh, used in case of analytical studies. Okay, so if you are going for, uh, to prove an association or a causal relationship, it is better you go with a probability sampling. And what is this judgment or uh, purpose sampling? Think that your sample size is 8. And from a class of 20 students, 20 students, you have to take 8 students. And it is investigators. If I am the investigator, it is my judgment. Okay. Judgment. Uh, I select 8 students. I take uh, 8 students depending upon my judgment. Maybe that is wrong. There is chance of selection bias is very high. Okay. So that is judgment sampling. And convenience sampling is again almost the same. Uh, 
more than judgment, it is my convenience. Maybe the children st standing near me or the children who are very familiar to me, very close to me, I will select as, my, as per my convenience. No need to say the chance of bias is very high. Sampling error can also occur. Okay. And what is this quarter sampling? For example, I want to do conduct a survey on the radio listening habit of 500 people in a village. That is those who are listening to radio. So I make uh, this village into various quotas. For example, 60 percentage will be housewives, 25 percentage will be farmers and again a 50 percentage I will divide that into children of uh, 15 to or 10 to 15 years. I make them into the whole village is divided into three quota and from this I select people with a uh, sample size of 500 maybe 300 from this quota um, 150 from this quota and again 150 from the third quota and this selection will be my own judgment so that is quota sampling so the whole population is divided into uh, or the whole sampling uh, frame is divided into uh, various quotas and there is no basis for how, if you ask me how I divided this into various quota that is my judgment okay so that is this quota sampling then I select 500 people right so that is quota sampling again it is sure that the chance of bias is there and also we cannot generalize them to the whole population okay and uh, what is this snowball sampling it is used when it is extremely difficult to uh, find out samples from the uh, population. In their cases, we can identify one or two cases. Uh, I, I, I picked up two cases from the population. Then I asked them, do you know any other person having, having the same disease? So they will point me two or three this person also will ask me then I will go to these cases and again I will take information from them ok like that this sampling will go so I can continue as long as my sample size is met or uh, at a limit where there is no other cases that from the identified cases so this will be the snowball um, sampling. Okay, all these are non probability sampling, that is, the uh, item, the probability of an item included in the study is not known. So, this is not ideal for analytical studies. The strength is less for this, and also the chance of uh, bias and also error is high in the case of uh, non probability sampling. These are the type of probability sampling. And the first one is simple random sampling. So it's very advantage is very simple, easy to perform. And what you need is, if you want to uh, do a simple random sampling, the first thing you have to take a complete list of all samples. For an example, there are 45 students in a class, and uh, you have to write Anida, Vishnu. Like that you have to number all the 45 students and from this you pick the students at random. Either you can use a lottery method, you can write the name of all of them and put it in a box and take it by a lottery method or you can use computer generated random number table. So computer generated random number table says at 5, you can take the number 5. Next, if it is coming as 44, you can take the 44 student. Till uh, like that, you can take as many as the sample size is there. So the advantage is that the uh, sampling error can be measured. There is no bias. And each student has an equal chance of getting selected into the study. And the disadvantage, see for 45 or 200 students, 
it is you, we can list the number of all but think if the population is around um, 10,000 or uh, 1 million it is not easy to take the list of all the uh, students or all the samples so that is a disadvantage it takes if, even if you are going to do that it takes a lot of time and the sample may not be a correct representative of the population so that are the, that is a disadvantage of simple random sampling for small studies you can go with a simple random sampling uh, what is systematic sampling as the name suggests just go uh, it is very systematic think that you have 45 uh, students so the uh, population or the number of number of sample is 45 and from that you want to take your sample size for the study is uh, 9 okay so you have first you have to calculate the sampling interval okay so uh, calculate the sampling interval for that It is k. This sampling interval is calculated by n divided by n. n is the number of total population divided by n is the number of your uh, sample size. So here it is 45 by 9. So it comes as 5. So the sampling interval is 5. So first number you have to take by random. I am taking the first number as 2. That is my random. And after that every 5th student is included in the study. So 1, 2, 3. So in this 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So after 5, the 5th student. 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be taken. And then 1, 2, 3, 12 will be taken. Like that you have to take till you reach the sample size. So that is a systematic sampling. The advantage is that it is easy to implement but it is dangerous when this has got a cycle. Okay. In that cases if the uh, population has got a definitive cycle then the risk chance of error is will be very high. And what is stratified sampling? That is, the whole population is divided into a homogeneous subgroups. For example, we want to find out vaccination coverage in Trandrum uh, Corporation. So, here comes the people of Trandrum Corporation area. All these are people in Trandrum Corporation area. And from this, we make separate homogeneous subgroups. They are called strata. Uh, the subgroup should be homogeneous. Either you can divide into a male strata or a female strata or you can divide that into uh, depending upon the age. So if I am taking it as male and females. Um, I want to uh, get a sample size of uh, 1000, okay. So this can be divided either into a male strata and female strata or it can be divided again into uh, age subgroups but anyway this subgroup should be homogeneous in all aspects, okay. And from that the uh, we can, uh, do a random, a simple random sampling and take uh, 600 and 500 and 400 so our uh, sample will be 1000 this is by doing a random sampling okay so this is example of stratified sampling the advantage is that each subunit has got an equal chance or representation in the uh, study and the disadvantage is that it is difficult to measure the sampling error in this stratified sampling. Sampling error is difficult to measure in a stratified sampling. Okay, but the uh, representation of each uh, subgroup will be equal in the study. Okay, and next is cluster sampling. 
The cluster sampling is used when the um, population, study population is scattered over a large geographical area and it is not possible to get a complete list of all the study population members. So in that cases, it is better to go for a cluster sampling. Taking the same example, we want to find out the vaccination status of people population in Trivandrum Corporation. So there are multiple wards are there inside the corporation. So in the corporation is again divided into uh, separate wards. So numbered ward will be there. So each ward is taken into a cluster. So in the ward there will be so many people. Okay. So this is ward 1. Uh, then there will be ward 2 will be there. And like that so many wards. Uh, think that the in Trivandrum municipality there are 10 wards. So you can take this ward as clusters. Okay. So the thing to remember here that in a cluster the sampling unit or the basic sampling unit is not person but each cluster or a homogeneous subgroup is the sampling unit in case of cluster sampling. So in a cluster it can be an array of homes or it can be a uh, ward in, inside the uh, corporation okay or a particular street in a uh, if there is multiple streets in a particular population the each street can be taken as a cluster got it so ward 1 is a cluster ward 2 is a cluster ward 3 is again a cluster like that you can uh, divide the uh, corporation area into multiple clusters and after that you can apply this uh, systematic sampling or simple random sampling or whatever it is to find out a particular. If in this case, I am selecting uh, ward 2 and ward 4 and ward 6. Every second ward, I am taking this as my uh, sample. Till you reach the sample size. And after that, you take the entire list of all household uh, living in these uh, selected wards and then go for um, study with the selected ward and household. Okay, that is cluster sampling. And we assume that the variability within each uh, cluster is minimum. Okay, if the variability is uh, or the heterogeneity is very large, there is chance of error. But we assume that the variability within each ward or each cluster will be minimal. And the disadvantage is again, in this it is difficult to find out the sampling error by doing a cluster sampling. So in stratified and also in cluster sampling, this, uh, uh, and it is difficult to measure the sampling error. Okay, that is stage sampling. As the name suggests, it is using multiple methods for sampling. For example, if you uh, want to, I want to study the vaccination status of population in India. So for that, uh, first uh, I will randomly choose by using a simple random method, I will choose four states and in each state I will find out the number of district by using a systematic sampling and from the uh, choose district I will go for a cluster sampling to find out each household or select household. So first to find out for the uh, vaccination status of India. First, I will do simple random sampling to find out four, uh, choose four states and from the four state, I will do a systematic sampling to find uh, to choose four districts and from that, I will find out the 120 household using cluster sampling or stratified sampling. Like that, I am using multiple methods to find out sampling, then it becomes multi-stage. This is useful if you want to study a very large population spread over a large geographical area and the list of population, all the list, list of all population is not available. In that case, you can go for a multi-stage uh, sampling. So, that is in probability, that is simple random, systematic sampling, where the, uh, there is a system, first you find out a sampling interval, then the first, the first number you choose by random, then by finding out the sampling interval, select the next numbers. In stratified, this uh, whole population is divided into uh, homogeneous strata 
and from that by using a simple random sampling number is uh, samples are selected in cluster sampling here again clusters are the basic subunit and in multi stage we are using multiple method for sampling so this is regarding sampling methods uh, as we cannot study the whole entire population we take a sample and this sample at all cases this sample is not an exact representative of the population so there, there will be a sampling error by doing a probability sampling we can find out the measure the sampling error and we can apply statistical measures uh, to do the study and um, by doing a correct sample size or uh, calculating a sample size the random error can be reduced and also the precision of the study can be improved and by doing a good study design and uh, uh, quality assurance the validity of the study can be improved thank you